Hey, my name is Jose Portillo, and I am married to Anna. We have a daughter. Her name is Daniela, and she is three years of age, and we have a son. He is 16 months old, and his name is Benjamin. And we are planting a church in the northwest part of this city, of Charlotte. And we are so excited that Christ Covenant is our mother church. And so I'm excited here to share a little bit about what's happening in the UNCC area and how God is calling us to plant a church and how Christ Covenant is being our mother church and how each of you is important for our work as we need your prayers, as we need your support, as we need you to join with us in considering how God might want you to be part of this work. And you know, the name of our church plant is Vive Charlotte Church. And Vive is a word in Spanish. Vive means he lives. Vive means that we also have life. And vive also means that we want to invite people into his life. So even though we are English-speaking church, the name of our church plant is Vive Charlotte Church because we want to be those who proclaim his life. We want to be those who proclaim that there is life available in him. And we want to be those that are going into our circles of influence and inviting people into the life that only Jesus can give. And if you think about the university city, there's a campus and there's the community that surrounds it. There's 98,000 people just surrounding uh, the university, UNCC. Just within 10 minutes, there is 98,000 people in the city is thinking that this community is, is about to explode. And they're thinking that in the next 10 years, the university city area will have above 200,000 people. Uh, the city has a vision for this community. They're thinking that it's going to be the next urban spot. And wouldn't it be great to begin doing the work in the middle of a community that is about to explode, that is about to grow and to bring the gospel, not only for the community and building people that know Jesus, but to build bridges into the university, to build bridges into the next generation of leaders that God wants to reach. Yeah, I think God is calling us at a perfect time to plant a church in front of the university area. The university area has a great potential because God is bringing people from different parts of the world. Yeah. It's a highly diverse community with people from different ages, different cultures, di different ethnic backgrounds, refugees and citizens. Wouldn't it be great to see the gospel come in the middle of a community and build unity around the reality that Jesus lives and that he invites us yeah, to life? So I'm excited just to have the opportunity to share with you what a little bit about my story, a little bit about what the church plan is taking place, and an invitation for you to consider. Do you think that God is inviting you to be part of the work of missions, of the work of church planting, of the work that God is doing, building up his kingdom anywhere around the world? I invite you to consider if God is calling you, and he, if he wants you to support this work or a work that is taking place uh, around the world. Maybe he's calling you for a season or maybe for the rest of your life. And my invitation for you today is to consider what are your gifts and talents? What is God placed in your hands that other people are in need so that they can hear the good news of salvation? The reality is that it doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter uh, uh, if you feel qualified. If God has been at work in your story, and if you're willing and if you are able, God desires to use you so that other people will know you, will know him better through your story. Yeah. My story is very simple. My parents are from El Salvador, and I was born as they were planting a church in Costa Rica. So by the age of 16, I had been part of my dad's ministry where the gospel was going out into El Salvador, into different communities. And as my dad was going out, planting churches, encouraging people, discipling people. And it was very exciting because there was never a moment in my life that I didn't know Jesus Christ. There was never a moment in my life that I didn't believe him to be my Lord. So at an early age, I already understood that I wanted to follow in the steps of my dad. Not because it was a beautiful job that he had with all these benefits. No, actually, his ministry life was really hard in the middle of civil war, in the middle of earthquakes, in the middle of a lot of social eh, tensions. The Lord was present in his life. And it was that fact. Jesus was there and Jesus was present in my dad's life, in my family, 
that I wanted to be part of that story. And I wonder, Lord, how would you use me to serve you in the church? And for a long time, I thought that he was going to serve me in Central America. But when I was 16, my family, after two big earthquakes in El Salvador, we ended up in Houston, Texas. That's where God's story was going to take a different shape in my life. And for the next 10 years in Houston, Texas, I began serving along my side, along my dad side, serving the Spanish speaking community. For over 10 years, we served the Spanish speaking community. But all of a sudden, I began realizing something. The sons and daughters of the immigrant community were not staying in church. And my first thought was like, oh, they're going to the English speaking church. But the reality is that they were just leaving the church that the sons and daughters couldn't understand uh, the stories of the first generation immigrant community, and they couldn't understand how, does it, how do you fit into the culture of this nation. They were basically a community in conflict. Who am I? Hey, what is my purpose in life? What is my background? Where do I belong? All these were questions amongst the sons and daughters of the immigrant population. So I began to think and feel cold. Maybe God is calling me to pursue the sons and daughters of the immigrant community here in Houston, Texas, and to plant a church one day. And that's where I began seminary and began pursuing to be trained, began asking for advices of pastors and ministers in different areas of town, and everybody began affirming my call and my passion for the young people. So I began praying, Lord, will you use me one day to plant a church in the middle of a university community where I would have access not only to the community where we can plan a stable a community of believers, but a bridge into the university, a bridge into the next generation of leaders where they might hear the gospel and be invited to the community of faith and be empowered to be disciples that one day would go out into their circles of influence to bring gospel transformation where they went. But in God's story and how he has different plans than the ones that we make for ourselves, I came to Charlotte to finish seminary. I came five years ago, and in my first class, I met, I met my wife. And God began to make my dream even bigger, hey, what it would look like to serve a community, what it would look like to pursue a next generation of leaders, what it would look like to serve the kingdom of God and proclaim his word and care for anybody and everybody that he would draw to us through his gospel. So this is how our journey to Charlotte began. A couple of years ago, we were talking to a couple of pastors, asking them, Lord, Lord, help us through the, the, the wisdom of these pastors, understand where should we go? Where are you calling us to serve? And the Lord opened a door through the partnership of Christ Covenant, Uptown Church, and Cross Park Church. They invited us to come and explore what it would look like to plant a church in the university city area. And I can tell you, for the last year, the Lord has opened, even through COVID, tons of opportunities to share the gospel, tons of opportunities to meet second and third generation sons and daughters of the immigrant community. We've met people in the community, business leaders, nonprofit organizations, churches, and different ministries. And everybody has affirming, been affirming our call, that God is calling us to plant a church in the middle of a community, in the middle of the university city. A church that would serve the diversity of the community, building bridges between the community and the campus, building bridges between developing uh, disciples of Jesus Christ in a congregation, but also building a community, a bridge into the university area where we can pursue the next generation of young leaders that will grow in the gospel and that will go and affect their circles of influence in their businesses, in their work, in their places of where they live in their places where they yeah, have fun. So that's what we're doing in the university area. Right now we're gathering a core group. Right now we're trying to yeah, develop and build community uh, amongst ourselves in safe ways because of COVID. But our desire is that we will begin to worship God together as a core group in the next weeks and in the next months, and then be able to yeah, worship God together and outwardly. How do we come together to celebrate the fact that Jesus lives? But how do we go out into the communities where God is calling us, 
where we live, where we work, where we play, to go and impact uh, the kingdom with the good news of the gospel. So one of the reasons I wanted to share with you and ask you a question this Sunday is like, would you consider how might God be calling you to be part of us? I want to share with you four stories from the Bible real quick uh, so that you might consider maybe God will use me. Maybe God will use me at Viva Charlotte Church. Maybe God wants to use me in another mission work that Christ's covenant is supporting. Or maybe God is calling me to affect uh, the lives of the people that are surrounding my family, my community, my city. Or maybe God is calling you to use your gifts and resources so that you would support the lives of many people that are, are out in the field doing the work of ministry. In John chapter 4. And Jesus is going to go to Jerusalem with his disciples. But Jesus decides to take a different route. And he's going to go to Jerusalem through the way of Samaria. This is the place where the Jewish people normally ignored. But Jesus is going to walk specifically and intentionally into the city of Samaria. And as the disciples are going to find food because it's a longer route, Jesus is going to stop at the well. And there's a woman there, a Samaritan woman, whom Jesus is going to begin talking to her about what it means to receive living water. And the incredible passage, and you guys can check in your Bibles, is that it is in this passage, in John 4, that Jesus is going to begin talking about to his disciples. Look, the harvest is ready. The harvest is plentiful. We need to pray that the Lord will rise workers to go into the field and bring a harvest for the kingdom. But the incredible thing in John 4 is that you see the disciples are not hearing what Jesus is saying. They're not hearing, look, the harvest is ready and it's plentiful and it's ready for the picking. What they're wondering is, what? why is Jesus eating with this woman? Why is Jesus talking to this Samaritan woman? The, the incredible thing of John 4 is that the disciples of Jesus who are walking with him didn't understand what Jesus is accomplishing and what Jesus is, is showing us about the gospel. But we do see in John 4 that the person that goes into the city is the Samaritan woman. The Samaritan woman goes into the city and begins to tell the people, Jesus knows my story. And yet Jesus is inviting me to have a part of his story. And we hear and read the text that at the end, people say, it is no longer just because of your words, Samaritan woman, that we believe. But now we have had a personal encounter with Jesus because of the testimony that you had. So the incredible part of John 4 is that we see that Jesus came into the story of a woman who shouldn't have a name or a place in the cultural environment. He shouldn't have been one of the people that should be a disciple to go and communicate the gospel. And yet Jesus takes a woman, a Samaritan woman, a woman that is neglected by her community, and Jesus welcomes her into his story. And Jesus uses her life to go into the harvest. And many people come to faith. So, friends, let me ask you a question. When you look back to your story, do you see God at work? If you see God at work in your story, I want you to know that God wants to use your story so that many people will come to know him through the fact that he's been at work in your story. In the same way that the Samaritan woman was able to speak to, his, to her community, a community that she was running away from. She was a pouring water into her pitcher in the middle of the day when... Nobody was there. She was isolated, yet she encountered Jesus. And Jesus would use her story. So if, if you can look back into your life and see that Jesus has been part of your story, that means you have every, everything or anything that you need to bring other people to the knowledge that Jesus lives. And so consider how God might use your story and the story of him at work in your life to enable you to be useful for the kingdom of God. In Mark 5, we see another story. Jesus has just delivered a man that has been spiritually oppressed. He's been possessed by a legion of demons. 
And Jesus is going to set this man free. And at the end of the story, this man has, is so grateful that he has received freedom and deliverance from a spiritual oppression all of his life. He's been an outcast. He's never had a place of community. And yet Jesus has come to his life and brought freedom. And this man is so eager to think, God, Jesus, I want to be one of your disciples. I want to spend time with you. I want to grow in knowledge. I want to be able to use my gifts and my talents in a better way. But I need more training. I need more time with you. And at the end of Mark 5, we see Jesus telling him, don't go with me. Your story that you have received mercy, your story that you have been removed, that this wound and these struggles have been, hey, that you have been set free is good enough for you to go into your community, to go back to your family and testify that the Lord has had mercy in your life. So think about it. What has God been doing in your life? What are those deep wounds, those deep scars, those deep struggles that God has helped you through? What are the things that God has helped you overcome? Doubt, fear, attempted suicides, attempted abortions, maybe divorce, abuse, depression. What are the, those things that have been so enslaving in your life that the Lord has set you free from? Then Jesus told that man, go testify of the mercy that you have received so that other people will hear that there is mercy available in Jesus Christ for their lives. Think about that, my friends. What has God done in your life? How do you see His mercy being poured by Jesus Christ into your life? That is the story that the world needs to hear. That is the story that your family, that your neighbors, that your city, that your community, that your workers, co-workers need to hear. That's why we're planting a church in the university city area. Because we haven't figured it out. We are not experts, church planters. We are not experts at engaging people. But we know our, our story. Jesus has been at work in my life. Jesus has been working in the lives of some people that are wanting to be part of our stories. It, that's all we want to do. We want to go and tell the story that Jesus is at work, that Jesus is setting people free, and that if he has had mercy in setting us free, how much more mercy can he have on others? You know, there's another story in Acts 16, uh, the story of Lydia. Uh, the apostles are preaching. They're going around looking for a place to worship. And all of a sudden, they come and meet Lydia. And Lydia hears the good news. And Lydia believes the gospel. But her doubts could have, uh, she could, the, her doubts could have come forth in her life. I'm just a woman. Uh, how could God ever use me? How could my gifts and talents be part of what God is doing? Yet she believed the gospel. And in Acts 16, you hear that she opened up her home so that they would stay and preach the good news. It's incredible that when you look at the, your Bible and look at that Paul is writing a, a letter to the Philippians, it is Lydia's work and Lydia's faith of opening her home. That's all she did. She believed the good news and she believed this is what I have. I have my home, my space, my time to open up the space for the, the man of God to be preaching the good news. So Lydia opens her home and a church begins. And all of a sudden, we have uh, the book of Philippians in our Bibles because of the faithfulness of this woman, uh, of this woman in the marketplace, a woman that had her own business, a woman that thought she was religious. And yet when she heard the gospel, she believed and her life was transformed. And she said, here's what I have. I have some space to welcome some people. And the disciples came into her home. The apostles came into her home and they began proclaiming the good news. And eventually God used that window that she opened into her life to affect the lives of many others. A church was birthed in, in, in the Philippians. Friends, let me, let me tell you, you have all that is needed. You have all that is needed for God to be at work in bringing new people to reconciliation with his son. You have all that is needed in the story of your Christian life to use you to encourage a new church plant, to encourage a missions work, to encourage a stable and growing church. God wants to use your life.
because he has been at work in your story, that means your story is able to impact the lives of so many others. God has chosen to use people and to use our stories and to use weak vessels and to use jars of clay so that he will be poured in with living water so that he will overflow in our lives. Finally, we can see a story in Luke 9 and Luke 10. Jesus is going to send his 12 disciples out for the first time to go and proclaim the good news. And in chapter 10, he's going to send out 70 people in two by twos to go out into the communities to preach the good news. And the incredible thing of Luke 10, he says that Jesus sent the people to go and proclaim in the places that he was going to show up. Jesus sends the disciples where he was going to come. He tells them, go into different cities, go into different homes, and whenever you are welcome, declare peace. If you have access to a place of peace, Jesus was telling his, his disciples, go and proclaim the good news, and then I will show up there. And that is an incredible challenge. And that is an incredible opportunity because, hey, let me ask you, where do you want Jesus to show up? Do you want Jesus to show up in your family, in your relationships, in your community, in your work? Do you want God to show up and bring salvation in your city, in your country, in different nations? So if we want Jesus to show up, we need to go. We need to go and proclaim the good news of salvation. We need to go and proclaim that he lives and that because he lives, we can have life. And because there is life available, that means our communities and the people in the communities can be impacted by his true life, gospel transformation. Friends, this is a, a good story for stories that make a challenge to our lives. And remind us that Jesus wants to use people to communicate his word. That's why in the Great Commission, he sends us. He says, I have received all authority in heaven. Now go. And when you go, I will be with you. That's why we're going into the university city area. But we need your help. We need uh, you to consider where, whether God is inviting you to be part of this work. And you can be part of this work in many different ways. You can be a committed person that desires to be praying for us. Not only for us, but praying with us and praying for our community that God would move. Because if he goes before us, then when we go, we will find students of peace, people in the community of peace, workers and businesses of peace that will allow us to go in and present the gospel. And if the, if the spirit of the Lord is there, there will be freedom and new lives and new families will come into the kingdom of God. The university city is a great opportunity because many international students, many refugees, many different groups of people are present, living, working, dreaming their lives in the middle of that community. So please consider whether God might call you to serve with us, uh, to be part of the body of believers, maybe to open your home, maybe to open your workspace so that we can meet and share the Bible with others. Maybe God desires you to mentor a younger person or an older person. And all they need to hear is how God has been at work in your story of your life and how he has had mercy in your journey, how he has been restoring your wounds and your brokenness, how he has been at the work of giving you new life. So please consider how God might be calling you, how God might be inviting you to be part of a community that is going to start doing the work of going into people's lives, wondering and praying if they would be people of peace where we can go and share the good news. Per perhaps God wants you to support us financially. And please prayerfully consider that. The reality is that God is building his church and that if you are willing and if you are available, we need you. We need you in the field just as you are. Just as God has been shaping the story of your life, that's all we need. We all will go in our weaknesses with fears. But if we do it, the Lord promises that he will go before us. And that if we lift them up, he will draw all men to you. And that he is the one building the church. And if we are faithful in proclaiming his word, people will come to know him 
through the stories of our lives so that the people will see him high and lifted up so that people will see his glory. And all it takes is jars of clay, jars of clay that understand that it's he who is at work in our lives, that it is he who is going to empower his word will never return void. So please consider if you are being called to be part of our work. I ask you to pray with me at this moment. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are at work. Heavenly Father, thank you that you desire that we would know your life. And if you are lifted up, you will draw all men unto yourself. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will empower us, that you will give us a beautiful feet to go in pro forward into the community and proclaim your word. Help us to understand the stories of our lives, that we, could be, that we will be able to look behind and see how you have been at work, how you continue to be at work. And because you are at work, we are able to tell that story with many people so that they will also know that you live and that you give life and that you give an abundant life able to transform us and give us an eternal joy for the rest of our lives. I pray that you will be with us and that you will send us in peace. Amen.